Hey, and welcome to This Is Gravel. I am Bobby Thompson, the casual cyclist. And sitting next to me this week is... Producer Matt. Producer Matt is with us. Where's Neil at? I don't know where Neil's at. Neil just, like, vanished. I think he's, like, already on the road to Lincoln, Nebraska for Gravel Worlds. Maybe he's running. He could be running. He has started running. Have you noticed that? I did notice something about buying running shoes, and I'm like, you're out. I asked him if he needed help fixing his bike. And he said, no, the bike's fine. And I, from that point on, I just I didn't hear what so, he said. So he's got running shoes. The bike's fine. Is it something else that I have, needs I help? have no idea what's right. going on with him. I, it, it just blows my mind. So There's let me so lead in. more efficient ways to get from point A to B. That's right. He could at least get a skateboard. Skateboard would be cool. Skateboard, longboard. Have right. you seen those electric skateboards? No. Yeah. Mind blown. Yeah. Awesome. So, okay, let's just do what we kind of roll into it. And Matt, what's been going on? What's been going on? I have been at the computer a ton this last couple of weeks. Work, the full-time job has uh, has been busy. Okay. You uh, work for the school district here, I, right? I, yeah, I work for the school district doing some communication work for them. And uh, all of our teachers came back to work today for the school year. So Good. students show up next week, and we've been very, very busy. Excited uh, to get to see the year started? Absolutely. It's probably, is it busier for you in the in the summer months, getting everything prepped behind the scenes? Absolutely. We are right. busier during the summer months. I can't wait for kids to get back, though, and get in the classrooms. It just makes it so much more fun to be around a school district than when it's kind of a... Oh, yeah. Ju- just the few kind of skeleton crew during the summer. Yeah. But, the energy that the kids yeah, bring back and everything. Yeah, sure. Two weeks ago, Ben and I uh, went and we bike packed over the Continental Divide out in Colorado. Nice. That vlog's going to be up after Gravel Worlds. I was trying to get it up this week. I want to see it. I, but, I really do want to see it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Dealt with some rain yeah. early in the morning one morning at about ten thousand feet but it was a lot of fun but that'll be out in the vlog hopefully the week after gravel worlds very cool so you've been out putting some miles on yeah not much since colorado <laughs> i think i've been on one ride this week so okay. but after we film today i'm going on the bike sweet what have you, you been, been up to bobby i have been getting prepped and ready for gravel worlds coming up this weekend and not that i have any chance or even inclination to be on a podium 150 miles in Link, around Lincoln, Nebraska is no joke. No. Um, it is usually warm, a little bit humid, muggy, and it is nothing but the rollers all day. So 150 miles is still 150 miles. You say, well, I'm just going to go do 100, 150 just miles. 150 right, I'm just going to go do 150 miles. So I've been trying to kind of recover from doing 24 hours of coming last weekend, and or two weekends ago, yeah. and then getting ready for this one, just that transition period. Absolutely. So, you know, you got to kind of wind down and then wind back up. And so I've been doing that. A lot of 20-mile rides, some 30-mile rides, 150-mile ride. I have been on the bike every day, but just yeah. kind of rolling. Speak, so. Speaking of going up to Gravel Worlds, I think you're going to talk about your bike a little bit. You and Neil came into the studio. and Yeah. What's more fun than to listen to us go on and on and on about the bikes that we ride, right? I mean, we do an episode every week talking about riding bikes. So, <laughs> so we might as well actually so if you're watching, include the bike. You might want to say right. something about the bike. Right. Sweet. Well, let's see, what's, uh, let, let, let's see what's coming up. Yep. So Matt asked, what are we going to Gravel Worlds on this weekend? What are we going to ride 10 plus hours on? So I'm just going to walk through the bike kind of slowly. Um, I implore you to follow up with any questions you have, and I'll be glad to help you out with it. Ask me during the ride if you want. Um, you know, where it all starts is uh, being cush, being a little bit comfortable through the ride, and that usually starts with the wheels. Um, I have a lot of confidence in the Maxxis Ramblers that I ride around here. I know they're going to be great for Gravel Worlds. I do have the 40s on, a um, little bit extra width for the little bit more sandy gravel up there. Um, and they are always, everything I have is always wrapped around my Cantu wheel set that I have. Uh, Carbon uh, Rebels from Cantu Cycling Wheels have been top notch, notch and have uh, helped me out for two years now. So I love that. Um, I did just this, this year upgrade to the uh, SRAM ETAP Red drivetrain, which uh, uh, has been a lot of fun. So as long as you make sure that your batteries are charged. So. Um, I am rolling with gears right down to the Absolute Black chain rings. I'm lucky enough to be a brand ambassador for Absolute Black also. And yes, I have fallen in love with the elliptical rings. Um, slower cadence and climbing, absolute must help. Um, always got to have the power meter on the cranks just so you can see how much you're truly suffering. Little Star Wars on the frame. Salsa Warbird has gotten me through three and a half years now. Um, absolutely love this frame. Couldn't be more comfortable on it. What helps out a lot with that is Loft uh, Grip Fork, which I've um, been rolling with that for about two years now. And I uh, couldn't imagine riding a bike without some kind of suspension on the front. 
no, you don't have to have it. Yes, we've ridden without it before, but there's no reason to not have it if it's within your budget to have. So love rolling with that. Um, on up to the, I have the uh, carbon cow chipper bars on here, which I absolutely love. Um, let's go with, gotta have my casual bars. Um, no more arrow bars. Don't care about being arrow, care about being casual. And this allows me to lay out. Um, I can uh, read a novel. I can put my iPad up there, watch a movie while I'm riding. Absolutely love this. So on to the carry-alls, which would be Sodero. Fall in love with this company this year. They let you customize the bags. I love the larger zipper. So easy all the way down to the back so you don't get food that's caught back here where a lot of zippers will stop right there. It's really hard to get that little bit out of there if you get something lost. Uh, let's see. I usually, and I will, and I apologize for not having them on the bike at this time. I ride with two uh, feed bags right here. Um, one is for extra high hydration bags and um, the uh, for packages, and the other one is for electronics, phone and all that jazz. So last but not least would be the carbon rail C13 uh, Brook Saddle. Um, used it for about a year and a half and it just fits me well. The trampoline effect that you get from, I'm usually sitting right about here. Absolutely love it. So that is in a nutshell, the gravel bike that I have. I do not ride with a third water bottle. Um, when I'm on the bike and when I'm tired, I tend to mentally not want to stop for anything. And these bottles are usually hard to get out while you're riding. So for a longer ride, 50, 60 miles, I'll go ahead and throw on my uh, chase vest from Camelback hydration pack. Uh, which carries 50 ounces and I will probably be wearing that this weekend also just for safety sake since it might be warm and humid out there. So any questions, please let me know. Um, if you want to talk to me about your bike, please do. Thanks. Hey guys, it's Neil Minister at Gravel here. I'm uh, just going to show you guys my Niner uh, RLT9 steel frame that I got set up for Gravel Worlds. As you guys know, <clears throat> if you've been watching the show, I uh, love my single speed. This is a great bike that's got me through a whole lot. Uh, let's go ahead first of all and just start off with the wheels. To me the wheels are probably the most important part. Uh, these Cantu wheels are just fantastic carbon. Absolutely love them. Uh, got some Maxxis Ramblers uh, wrapped in them. I've uh, got some nice wheels or excuse me nice tires here. Um, they're 38s. Uh, they should work I would say fine up there especially in the Nebraska gravel uh, as it's a little bit more sandier than our Flint Hill stuff. Uh, you'll notice here on the uh, fork I've got myself two of these larger bottles from Gravel City. Uh, this is really big for hydration for me. Last year at Gravel Worlds, I stopped probably about every stop that was available. And it kind of slowed my day down. And I don't do well when I take a lot of breaks. When I take a lot of breaks, my body shuts down. Uh, so this year, I've decided to go with two of these bigger bottles up here on the fork. Uh, they're easy to grab. And then I'll have two bottles back here, of course, in the frame as well. Uh, and then have a hydration pack. Uh, up top, got the Sidero bag. Uh, love this. It's just so simple to open up when you're riding. Uh, you can throw a lot of stuff down in there. Uh, I've got tape, I've got extra hydration stuff, mix, tailwind, all that good stuff in there. Uh, usually gets me through going really well. Um, let's talk about the gearing. Um, last year I learned that up in Nebraska it's hilly. Um, didn't know that before. And so right now I've got this bike set up 4220 this time. Uh, last year I did 4219. Uh, I'm going 4220 this time just because simply I want to be able to climb at the end of the day. Last year at the end of the day I could not climb. Uh, it absolutely wrecked me. And so setting it up 4220 I think will keep it so that I can ride all day and have a good time. Uh, of course Ergon saddle. I love this. Put this on uh, when I got the bike last year and this saddle has not let me down. I've spent probably about 4,000 miles now on this saddle and never had a time when my when my backside was sore. Uh, so I absolutely love that. Of course, got it set up with disc brakes. Um, other than that, the only other thing that I will be having with me, like I say, is a hydration pack, uh, just an orange mud one liter uh, pack on my back, basically to give myself a little bit of extra water to carry me through the day. But that's my bike for Gravel Worlds. So it's without noting, Bobby, you and Neil have very different bikes. One of those big differences <laughs> is you have gears on yours. Oh, yeah. I love gears. Oh, but, yeah. But two very different styled bikes. All right. Well, here's how I look at it. It's more important to me 
to finish faster so I have more time to drink a couple more beers before Neil rolls in. So That's gears, logic. Right. Gears help me do that. Okay. So my whole logic in the whole day is, yes, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. I have a lot of friends out here. Mm -hmm. But how, how, how much faster can I get in for that finish line beer? So gears help me do that. And when you're going roller after roller out there all day? I, right. That, that, that's worth being in earlier. That's what that I'm beer. saying. Right. I mean, I could train my, my butt off and get faster on a single speed. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So instead, I just ride with gears. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the weekend itself. Okay. Saturday morning. Well, first off, Friday afternoon. They've yeah. got the expo going on down there at CycleWorks. But really, let's talk about the race day. Okay, race day. Saturday morning. When was the last time you left on a ride in the dark? Mm. So I will say this, and I love Craig and Corey to death. I don't like any race that starts at 6 a.m. Correct. Um, 6 a.m. is very early. That means I'm rolling out of bed about 4. Yeah. Because, you know, you got to do all the pre-race prep, yes. right? You got to eat. Yes. You got to yes. you, you visit the bathroom. Correct. Right? So you, you got to do all these coffee, everything. Uh -huh. So there, there, There's a science. Right, to science to it. So, yes, um, I'm not excited at all uh, about the 6 a.m. start. But uh, as we all know, once you start pedaling the bike, the – the early, the early morning blues go away because yeah. you're on the bike. So by 6.30, I know that I'll be into the ride and it'll be exciting. You'll see the sun rise and it is beautiful. It really oh, yeah. is over there. So it, it's fine. It's a, it's a momentary uh, dislike. So. Okay. So early morning roll out there. Early morning roll out. Let's talk about the road conditions themselves. Yeah. The gravel of Lincoln, Nebraska. First off, the first time I went up there, I think this is the third time I'm taking the Gravel Guru crew up there. Yeah. I couldn't believe how wide most of the roads are. Right? It's like an interstate. Yeah, like two or three times the width of the ones we have around here. Yeah, no, uh, the good thing about that is, um, you know, a lot of the roads around here and a lot of a lot of our gravel roads, maintenance roads, you know, they're they're really a car and a half wide. Yes. You have three lanes, and the middle lane is, is actually the inside lane for both directions. Yes. So if a car comes by you, they got to get way over. You both can't hold the lane. Exactly. Well, on most of the roads around Lincoln, you can, both vehicles could hold a lane. So as a as a cyclist, as long as you're getting over and there is a rideable lane clear to the right-hand side, you're really nowhere near the mm -hmm. car. Um, plus the gravel is smaller. It's pea-sized gravel, yeah. so you don't get these big chunky to stuff. Sand, right? Oh yeah, some of it is. You kind of sink in like sand. Yeah. So, so I don't feel as as such as I'm going to get a flying rock in my face when I'm there. But I will say this: because it is more sandy, mm -hmm. if that clear line is not on the right hand side while you're over there, it is a lot of resistance to pedal against, and so you waste a lot of energy just pedaling on the normal gravel. Are you better backing off till you can get the line then? No, right no, I mean, you still gotta keep that momentum going, because if you're backing off, then you're going so slow that you're still yeah. wasting energy, yeah. so. So no, it, it, yeah, it's, the roads are nice, so. Yeah. That's, I've, I've actually never rode in Nebraska. This will be my third time going to a race in Nebraska without ever taking a bike. Dude, don't you take a van? Yeah, it's, it's full of gear, though. I mean, it, it's okay. pretty tight. Okay. But anyways, going up there, uh -huh. the last couple of years, let's talk about the weather. It's been kind of toasty. It's been warm. You know, last year got really warm at about mile 95. I remember mm -hmm. is where my race kind of fell apart last year. And I mean, I still got in, but it, it definitely wasn't as fun at that point. Yeah. The morning was actually pretty cool. Pretty, pretty calm last year. Oh, yeah. It came in in that fog. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't bad. Uh, we've had one year where it's always been humid um because rain's always a possibility this time of the year because it gets okay. so hot you have so many hot days in a row that eventually the rain's going to break and right? i believe they've been getting rain up there this and they've week, been getting like rain we so here finally so in fact i think the forecast called for rain possibilities the day before and after which all that means to me is the day of is going to be humid with the possibility of rain yeah, some toss-up showers right and... exactly so we'll have the same thing and we actually had those kind of conditions i think it was two years ago and i rode the last you know like five miles in in a downpour but it was at that point in time, you know, the, the finish line's coming up um, five miles. Wasn't that big of a deal. And the rain stopped after that. So, you know, you had 20 minutes of rain. It's so just a shower. There it was just a point. shower. Right. So it was fine. Uh, and I, I kind of expect that to happen. We'll have a pop-up shower somewhere along the way. Yeah. So we, we've had a lot of dry races, honestly. Lately, yeah. It feels yeah. Like. But they've been just as dry as we have. So and their whole roads because of the type of uh, gravel, they hold that water well. Mm -hmm. um, was it last year that we had a big rain? No, it was two years ago. We had the big rain the night before. Correct. Right, it during the night. The whole... Right. So we got up in the morning and, yeah, because it was the clockwise route that, yeah. that year. And, uh, you know, the first 20 miles was uh, like riding in wet sand. Yeah. Which is totally okay. Yeah. It's, you're, it's not but mud. But hard packed type sand. Right, 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 right. It, there's no mud whatsoever. Yeah. You're just riding a hard packed sand. The only reason it got tough is that 
first 20 miles is where the race sorts itself out. Mm -hmm. And so you do a lot of lane crossing. Yeah. And so you had to, had to hit it hard because mm -hmm. it was it kind of sucked you in mm -hmm. a little bit. But other than that, that first 20 miles, oh, it's fine. Yeah. And, that, and it rained a lot that day before. So I, it I, rained I, a lot. I'm yeah. really looking forward to getting up there, seeing what yeah. it brings. Any goals or any plans for you? Or? You know, every year I have finished about a half hour to 45 minutes faster than the previous year. Last year I finished at 10 and a half hours. It'd be nice to finish at 15 miles an hour. So, you know, 10 10 hours this year um the thing that gets you is the fun part so it's mm -hmm. it's that conundrum you do you want to finish the ride fast so you can uh, claim a faster run time and have a beer afterwards or in the true sense of gravel worlds with all of the stops you have along the way do you want to enjoy the ride and enjoy the ride you know i think you have to find that that special yeah. mix so There's maybe you know maybe not a 30 second stop go in there for a minute or two mm -hmm. Don't spend half an hour, but enjoy the stop and yeah. thank the volunteers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So. Thank the volunteers out there. The checkpoints are always a lot of fun there. Absolutely. Probably. So we've talked a lot about Gravel Worlds. Now to my favorite part of the week, social media. Social media. We've well, got stuff from everywhere, don't we? Well, we've got stuff from all over the world this week. Okay, so. do you have a favorite yet that you've seen come through? I do not have a favorite yet. Sweet. I, I know there's 30-some images on Facebook alone, nice. I think. So, But absolutely love seeing them. Check a look, take a look at these ones we pulled this week. Sweet. Trevor sent in this photo from the Swift Summit 200-100 bicycle race presented by Swift Summit Northwest. Bobby Smith sent in this photo riding the Breck Epic Wheeler Pass. The gravel was huge, he said. John Spenny sent in this photo at the Vermont Gravel Cycling Camp hosted by the Cycling Formula. Hunter was out riding at Lake Sylvia in Perryville, Arkansas. Jacob Marple was out exploring the back roads of Oklahoma. John sent in this gorgeous photo of Laramie Peak in Eastbrook, Wyoming. Charlie Patterson was exploring the back roads of Woodson County, Kansas. Kate sent in this awesome photo from Hawk Point, Missouri. Scott Myth showing off his loaded rig on the Great Divide mountain bike route. Eric was out checking out the Southern California coastal gravel. What, a, what an amazing place to ride. Kurt Schneider said he completed 62 miles of gravel and dirt in the area south of Boise, Idaho, and 100 plus degrees. Hey, thanks again to everybody that submits photos using the hashtag This Is Gravel on social media, posting them on Facebook. We're headed off to Lincoln this weekend. How did they get a hold of us? Tag us, follow us, That's check right. out the Casual Cyclist, Minister of Gravel, All right. tag the Gravel Guru page. Headed to Lincoln. Headed to Lincoln. If you see us, make sure and give us a fist bump, high five, or hug. Yep. Yell at us. I've got stickers. I'll have stickers on me all weekend out there. So yeah. Sweet. At the start line, the finish line, at the expo if you see us. So thanks again. See you all in Lincoln. Bye.